Uh, you know it's a good session. We're good. Nim, yeah. when uh, Chris shakes his head in disgust. Yep. So every session. Right. <laughs> yep, we're good. Yep. Live. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. the, the oh, Twitch sort of got the Streamlabs kind of got stuck in starting up, and I'm just like, uh, yeah, I see. All right, then. Well, then, welcome back to Roll for Story, beginning the new arc as we delve into the elemental plane of Earth to find enlightenment, find missing fathers, and find diamonds to resurrect long dead wizards. Well, shortly dead was. Hey, he's only been dead for like a day. Yeah, yeah. feels longer because it's been like a week since we played. But oh, still, two weeks since he's been dead too. It's been like twelve <laughs> hours, really. <laughs> one snurg is dead, but that counts as one. That only counts as the one. Bell, the bell has tolled for one of the snurgs, but there are nine more representing the nine days that they have to delve into this endless labyrinth-like cavern and find what is known as the Crystal Cave, supposedly an abundance, a wealth of diamonds resides there. Enough that they can possibly bring him back via a resurrection spell. Um, the party took a portal from the well-renowned bard and casino owner, Chadnir. He dated them straight to the entrance to this place. <laughs> and as soon as you step through, you saw towering elementals pulling their way out of this uh, this cave. So one of them looked like it had been part of the canyon wall itself, and it kind of animated, and all these runes had lit up on its arms. Uh, it smashed its fists down, and a combat began as they spotted Kishan. And without even letting them get, uh, speak, you already guessed ahead of time what they were. These are slavers from the elemental plane looking for potentially fresh meat to add to their chain gangs. So, without further ado, you jump straight into combat, defending yourselves against these minor earth elementals, except they still packed a punch when they threw a rock at you in the sky, knocking you off your glaive of flying, knocking Elias off his horse of flying, and they all came tumbling down, ready for this ankylosaurus looking beast to slam them with its hammery tail. Uh, meanwhile, Kishan, you jumped on the back of the walking mountain and punched down on top of its head, kind of sending this fissure over its face, and you just kept on slamming into that same crack, widening it until the head kind of crumbled away. Uh, the beast fell down, uh, revealing this large chasm. It's also previously where Irina had yanked <laughs> one of the... Um, it looked like the spellcasters. He seemed to be some sort of shaman, perhaps manipulating the runes on these elementals. And uh, yeah, Arena used their eldritch pull to yank them into the hole. And he hasn't been seen since. So you don't know if he's dead or if he's just so far down that he hasn't got back up. But nonetheless, that's the situation. Uh, Karius, you're for some reason terrified of this beast ever since you ate that cake. That it's... It's giving you the creeps. So, start back at the top of the round. It is... It is Kishan's go. We did stop at the top, didn't we? Yeah. We always do that. Yeah, cool. All right, then. So, yeah, Kishan, you've just seen this walking mountain sort of topple. You've leapt off of it and landed behind this swinging tail that's going to and from. There's like this rune that's glowing on the end of its... on the end of its hammer. And uh, Elias is on the ground, battered and beaten, laying there as an elemental raises his fist, about to crush him. So, yeah, over to you. Uh, what's what's this thing looking like? Is it injured or not touched? Or Yeah, it seems as though as soon as you landed, it was gone into a frenzy. There's a lot of cracks over yeah. its hide, and I think someone got a good hit on it with the Cloud of Daggers. Yes, yeah. and he can, and he's kind of manipulating a cloud of daggers underneath. It's shredding its softer underbelly. Okay, uh, and have you tried uh, stunning, enough money? stunning it? No, we have not <laughs> no. tried stunning it yet. No. But it is. We, we, we well, you tried stunning the big thing. 
Yeah. No, he but didn't. Because no, you didn't because you thought the constitution would be too high. But this, you haven't had a chance. This is your first time about to hit it. Yeah. It is Noise vulnerable thunder. to thunder damage, but that doesn't mean anything to you. At least nope. I think it is. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to jump back onto its back, and I'm going to try and climb up to its face and punch it. Up to its face? Okay. Yes. Do you funnily enough see a similar looking rune as to the one on the tail that's in your direction? Yeah. You can go ahead and try to get a punch in it. Thank you. And let's have a look. 24 is actually going to hit it. Uh, constitution saving throw. Yeah, going to do it. Okay. Oh. <laughs> this thing doesn't seem to even register your blow. Yeah, that's a plus 12. It's, it's stony hide is so thick that trying to find pressure points, it's nigh impossible. It can still fail. Again. <laughs> okay. Oh. You want to do it again? I'll roll another com save. Uh, 18. Oh, okay. A bit lower this time, but still holding on as you pummel into its head. Probably probably hitting the floor as you do. That's all fine. Uh, climbing around it. Uh, my bonus action, I'm going to uh, just boot it in the face. Okay. Uh, oh 25 to hit, 13 damage. 13 damage, it is actually getting quite hammered as it repeatedly gets cracked over the head. <laughs> oh, and God, I, that one. I will just watch it, just kind of like looking more back to Carriers, uh, the fact that he's hella injured uh, and trying to find an exit, see if I can grab him on the way out. You've... I think you've um, got back feline agility as well, by the way. Just so you know. Oh, okay. Um... Yeah, yeah, because you you stood still the previous two turns, just punching the same spot. Elias has actually saved your life a number of times. I want to point out last session when the uh, giant walking mountain was was on its head, it raised its fist up to try and punch you off of its head. And each time, Elias seemed to shout something over the rumbling earth and managed to distract it both times. Oh. So, you actually have Elias oh. thanks for a few things. Right, in that um, case, I would change things. Uh, Kushan will run and grab Elias and will scramble up this mountain here with Elias in tow. Okay. The two creatures will get attacks of opportunity. The two creatures? Yeah, there's an earth elemental there as well. Does it have reach? Ten foot reach. Wow. <laughs> Massive arms. They look like uh they look like boulders. Uh, uh all right. I didn't know it had reach. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the first is gonna be the earth elemental. It just takes a quick slam towards you. I think have you got your um Clock up, yeah. Should do. It's back up, isn't it? Yeah. Look at displacement makes right, it. <laughs> it's a disadvantage, but it still manages to connect with you, Sean. And a heavy hit nearly knocks you out. But you're stumbling away, and it's just at that point when you get to about there is when you provoke the hammer tail beast tag of opportunity. This one might be a bit more detrimental. Question is, what to go with? Uh, let's go with this. Um, just a simple claw. Actually, it hasn't done this yet. Ooh, what the fuck? Sorry, right. right, this should be a diss. But let me roll yes. it again. Yeah, I think you hit. <laughs> Definitely hit that one. This thing is a raging as well, so actually it's flat anyway, just remember, all of its attacks have advantage at this point. What's so Kishan's AC? It's 18, I, I think, or 17 rather. I don't think I've used, I, I was scrolling up and I don't think I've used cutting words this turn, have I? 
Because I was scrolling up and I don't see my roll for it. You can attempt to. You're going to need to roll a 9, though. Yeah, I'm going to attempt to. Uh, uh, so this thing is... It's, he's going to oh, get it, it up by 9. Okay, it was worth a shot. Is not enough, I'm afraid. It very tried. low is a 217, which is... No, sorry. 19. Just still here, I'm afraid. And now realizing just how terrifying this beast truly is, as it swipes out towards you, connects, and this slash seems to be empowered as if the rune on his head glows. The slash kind of slices straight through uh, your lower abdomen. There. It's just terrifyingly powerful now that it's enraged. Uh, Lies, you kind of fall to the ground still. Uh, Ishan has, uh... has bit the bullet for you in this instance. And straight after that, it's it to go. This is going to be rough. It, it starts its turn in the Cloud of Daggers, doesn't it? It, it does, does, actually. Yeah, there's still a Cloud of Daggers under there. Okay, you can roll damage again for it. Mm. Come on. Come on. You do it. High roll, high roll. You'll be able to just click the spell and then don't don't consume a spell slot or and don't place a template, just untick those two things. Yeah, it's it's because uh, she's already got it active, it's like active concentration spell, you're already concentrating uh, on fine. cloud of daggers. Just, just, it will do that, but you can just click yes. And okay. Yeah. You'll so say that you're you lose concentration, but then you gain concentration. And the other thing you can do is it is just if you find where you the spell is. You did it at third is, level before, didn't you? Did I? Here we go. The other thing you can do is in the chat, you see where it says 46, there's a little dice icon. You can yeah. also click that. And if it is cast at a higher level, you can click the extra um, at higher level dice roll. Oh, there no, too. you heal carriers at a higher level. The card of daggers was just yeah. straight, yeah. Yeah. Enough? Is that enough? There we go. 14. All right. Wow. Oh, it's not enough. Oh. No, it's not. I'm afraid this creature lets out a. Pained roar, however, as you can see, its body is getting cut up from underneath, and its eye is suddenly beam, kind of glow, beam towards um, probably Elias, because he was his initial target, and he's going to go straight for his bite attack on you. And yeah, you see these flashing jewels come straight towards you. It's a straight, well, it would have been a straight roll. Now it's advantage again because of its. Destructive storm ability. You did. You, you did cast a uh, cloud of dags at a higher level. It rolled eight d four damage last time. Eight d four. Yeah. Another four d four then. So another four d four. Yeah, I just scrolled up. I thought I remembered that from last time. Yeah. So another eleven. Is that enough? We get another eleven. That's not. Okay. It is getting close though. I will say. Uh, there's probably blood cut, like pouring from its jaws as it connects with you, Elias. And I need you to make a constitution save. It just did. Which you passed. Yeah. Um, wow, nice. Okay. However, 39 damage. Why is that not dropped to me? Um, are you resistant to poison? Am I resistant to poison? Shouldn't be. That? No, you're not. Oh, maybe it's because I made the you... save. Yeah, if you make the save, is it is it half damage if it's I make the save? Um, no, it's it's no damage. Oh, okay, that's that's how I survived. Okay. Target makes right. an eighteen comes save or becomes poisoned for one minute. While poisoned, you take poison damage because you have avoided the condition. You yeah. may you manage to basically resist it from uh, entering into your bloodstream. So but the sheer. The sheer power of the jaws crushing you is enough to nearly knock you out. Um, after that, it's got a tail attack that is going to swing around. And it's, it doesn't like this cloud of daggers. I'm well, I will admit, I'm going to say it goes for Andy in this instance. Wing is definitely the one concentrating on it. So the tail is a little awkward to roll. Plus 13. Okay. 
And with this hit, 21 to hit. I think that connects. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's get what else. Sure. Should have been the advantage. Okay, 26. All right. So this huge tail comes around and you realize he's actually probably about 15 foot away from you. But the tail comes around, swings over the over the top and actually comes down like a hammer would straight on top of you, uh, bonking you on the head or give me all the damage. Uh, really... That's this 48. And because it's in rage now, it does an extra 46 damage, which is nasty. Plus seven. There we go. He takes 39 points of bludgeoning damage as this hammer just crunches down. And let me just check. You do need to make a constitution save for the concentration. Uh, oh, 18. Actually, is, what is it? Half of 39, so you need to make a DC 20 save. Be 19. I'm afraid. Yeah, 19, isn't it? One it's off. just under. I'm afraid. Yeah. Where's that cloud of that guy's gone? There it is. Gone. The cloud of daggers suddenly disperses as Andy's concussed by the hammer tail. It's a miracle that you're even alive from this, but <laughs> the tail raises away from you. Uh, you do see there is a marked rune over, like, probably your head, probably where it hit you. And it's the same kind of brand as what's on the tail itself. It's just kind of glowing there. Um, okay. That's actually its turn. It is the earth elemental that was in the wall. It starts basically gliding through the floor, and you can see its upper half slowly rising and rising until it gets within range no. to slam. I think it has to stop right about here. But it is in range with Elias. No. And goes for a quick multi-slam on you. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, I'm afraid so. Oh! Oh! Sorry, I'm uh. missing you. Uh, the shield is holding as you get battered. You're probably being bitten and pulled around, yeah, but you're still I'm holding the shield up in the air. I've got my I've got my arm in the teeth of that guy and I've got my shield to the side. <laughs> oh. Okay. He tries to grab a hold of the shield and then just punch you in the face with this other fist. Oh! oh. <laughs> but apparently you have a, a jaw of titanium. Uh, <laughs> it's probably a breastplate that it, it connects with instead. You just feel the, the reverberating shudder through your armor, but you're winded, but you, you didn't take any damage okay cool elias tanking over here it's your turn um, so what did um, what did we call in terms of dimension door and someone being unconscious you can take them with you okay uh, i'm like yep this has been fun but you guys got this for a moment while I take our fairy friend here to the back. And I cast Dimension Door on us both. Okay, where do you want to... You go as far just, as you want, pretty much. Isn't pretty much that, isn't big enough for your dimension? As, as far... Well, towards the back as possible. Okay. Basically. I saw, it I'd say, 500 feet. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd say just to about here. I don't want to take us out of the battle because... Cool. If this lasts a bit longer, I can bring Kashan back into it. But... Yeah. So you just, as you get next to the pool, I guess you see Chad News just sitting there with like some popcorn that, that, um, that Snoke has provided. Why doesn't he do something? <laughs> oh, oh, heal? Oh. Heal? Um, do you, you guys are doing great. Um, If I step through, I, I, I can't come back the other way. Um, Pass through the portal. You know what they say, uh, Lady Luck 
a goddess I... of good fortune. She shines upon those who take great risks. And you're, you're missing out another something story. Very risky right now. You know what? Oh, okay. Either heal us or close the portal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, hold on. Chad needs to something, obviously. Is he actually helping? Okay, yeah, cool. I mean, why not? How long does gate how long stay open? Is supposed to last. I don't really know. Let me check. There's one like action. A minute or something, isn't it? It lasts one minute. Yeah, it actually does last wow. one minute. But it's probably closing as he does this. I'll let him get through one heal spell. Yeah. I'll give it all I've got. Um, he's going to cast his masculine wounds on you. So, I don't think he's in range for both um, the rest of the party. So, he will get both Elias and. Sean with this. Um, there we go. A torrent of healing magic flows through you. And, uh, yeah, it's, you can almost hear Timora's voice saying, good luck, good fortune. And, uh, yeah, you're back up on 19, Kishan, and Elias, you're looking a bit better as well. Yeah. I'm just like, Right, back into the battle. Back in. <laughs> and um, that's fine. Uh, okay. Karis. Technically, I have movement, so I guess I'll move closer to be. Yeah, sure. I think I can move to the. Go boom. Yeah, Karis, pretty much. <laughs> Fourth level shatter. Oh, no. <laughs> you got out in time. They're all grouped up. This is the worst. Shatter <laughs> is also going to be disadvantaged for them. Because mm -hmm. they are made of inorganic material, mm -hmm. such as stone. Mm -hmm. um, including the beast, really. He's got a... Mm. The beast has got a softer on the boat, so I'm going to give him flat roll. But the other two are going to get wrecked. So... Here they come. Actually, pretty good rolls. For most of them. However, ooh, the shatter damage is so effective. Even if they do see it coming and they try to resist it, they bring up their arms and their arms just shatter into flints and pebbles. They just go flying. And this one right here, he sent scattering over the canyon wall into pieces, countless, countless pieces. This one is left like cracking and crumbling. He looks more like a pile of rubbles with a face, with a face on it. And lastly, the hammer tail is still standing. Yeah. Ooh, okay. Good job. Anything else? I'm just considering. Let me just look at my spells a moment, because I can potentially do That's something nice with it. Nice shatter. Very nice. Mm. Got all three of them. It pays to have a tank. Draw them all in together. Vampire. <laughs> You did, and then get out in time as well. Uh, that was. They're almost certainly going to succeed on that. Is there anything I can do? Is there anything I can do? Yeah, there is something you can do. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you. Garrus is just going to scale the wall and yeah. <laughs> climb out of being basically right next to these things. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this, that was it. This Earth Elemental suddenly turns its head towards you, pulls itself forward, realizing you're getting out of range as it's nope. coming towards you, nope. Nope. and instead looks up, um, kind of merges with the wall momentarily, and a large boulder-like arm swipes across the top, potentially hitting Irina here. Yep, that connected. And then the second slam. Yep. Uh, time Irina takes a bit of the bit of the heat he's on these. In rage if he's hitting me? He's in sorry? He's 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 in range of me, right? Yeah. If he's hitting me. He's Sweet. in ten, hellish he's rebuke. In yeah, hellish rebuke. Okay. Um go ahead. Click that. It's a deck save, isn't it? Uh-oh. 
I don't think it's going to matter, actually. Uh, the amount of damage that just did. <laughs> Oof. Okay. The flames are too much for it. It's already cracked and fissured. And as the flames just push through it, you see it blast back. And it just looks like shrapnel flies across the mountainside. And he is gone. Okay. I think if you wanted to do that before the first... Sorry, but... If you wanted to do that in between slams, you can as well, just so you won't, you won't take the second one. Yeah, no, I was going to, but you did the second one before I That's could right. say anything. That's cool, I'm, it's fine. Give you, the, give you that back. So just as it brings around the second one, you just see the flame exploding this thing away. I like the idea yeah. that it turns into literally, it's Irina just punching it, like this tiny little fist, and <laughs> just goes... <Yeah. laughs> I'm just imagining All Irina right. going like, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> just punches it back. That is, yeah, that is almost like the straw that broke the camel's back. This guy has been taking so much punishment. Finally, the hellish butte that pushes it over the edge. Um, however, there is still one last enemy left, Andy. You can finish it oh, off, Andy. Go out. for it. <laughs> that would be a ass. big spell. for an old classic and um mind you put it donning her cloak isn't that an action but she's not trying to disappear yeah you've, oh, you've yeah, already got the cloak on magic missile. okay yeah yeah then, then yeah doing that then what was it it was but just click the roll and it'll pop up quickly i think it was that fifth though wasn't it yeah it's fifth yeah And we need to fix that so that it does an extra, it does an an extra, extra stick. So 22 yeah. damage. Uh, she, so it does, yeah, 22, isn't it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so ooh, it's looking really bad. 22 uh, little tiny missiles flying through, either finding poaches on his softer underbelly or into the cracks that Kishan had already made and carries from the shattering. This thing is stumbling around it looks like it's coughing up blood and even its tail kind of looks like it's drooping to the ground it looks like it's dragging it now it hasn't got the strength to really lift it okay and anything else You know it's in range as well, because I did hit you with the tail. Oh, no, fine. Yeah. Um, Irina. Ow. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, I am going to do something potentially stupid, but keep its attention in case this fails. Um, like stupid. Irina is very stupid. She just punched a thing in the face. Um, it worked. She's gonna take a run, jump off, have Candlewick appear in her hand, and she's going to stab down on it. Nope. Oof. It's fine, I get a second. I get a yeah, second attack. Yeah, you kind of land, and you find a, this stony hide is like it's like trying to sli uh, slice into a into a stony wall. Oh, those are bad rolls. They were, yeah. they were so, so damn heroic. But uh, I'm afraid you don't find it softer spots. It's almost like That's it's fine. completely... I am still a distraction for all my soft, injured friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Um, okay. Um, let me just see. Kishan, yeah, you're up. Oof. Um, I mean, my action's going to be... Oh, sorry, my turn's going to be super quick. Uh, 
Oh, no, Chad says, says, if you... There's Chad near there as well, and he's, he does offer you, because you are looking still rough. He says, you're still looking pretty bad. If you reach through, I can get one more spell in before it closes. But you'd have to... Okay. It'd be your action to basically reach through. Oh, really? But he says, I can give you a really big heal. I'll use the harp. Give it here. And he, like, pulls it off of, um, <laughs> off of Skelly Chad. Mecha Skelly Chad. I've got is... one last heal in me before it closes. But it, it would mean sacrificing your action this round. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's healing or it's... Wait, if it's less or... than 33, I'm going to be livid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, hold on, hold on. Um, in that case, after the after Elias is go, he will he will cast regenerate on you. It's a seventh level spell, so let's hope it gives you enough. Um, I'll tell you what, you can hold your action up to then if you want to hold it to move. But other than that, um, yeah. you've got to stay there to get the, the benefits of this spell. Yeah, because that's that's the main thing. I just want to get back so I can protect. Go. I'll say then you're holding your action to dash. As soon as it gets to Eliza's go, you can get back into the fray. Um, it is the Hammer Tails go, and it is Irina who is bravely trying to fend this thing off all by themselves. So it tries to shake you off, and as it turns its neck around, it turns its jaws towards you and goes for a bite. Um, Oh. Having trouble trying to get you. It's spinning around. There we go. Got the angle at once. And. Nom. Ooh. Make that con save. Constitution, Constitution save. That is a pass. So you are also not poisoned, thank God. So. The... It's the start of a new round. Hellish Rebuke. Are you going to. Rebuke is. I'm surprised you've st saved both spell slots for this. Mean. I was trying to save spell slots. We're not even in the cave yet, but... <laughs> no, no, well... To be honest, I think we'll be having a short rest before we go into the cave, so you'll get them back anyway. Oh! <laughs> that is... Oh, yeah. That was incredible. Uh, you just... You just blast this thing apart almost to... to pieces, but there is... Still, a, like this, there's basically a chunk of stony hide that's just blasted off its back. It's fallen to the ground, like clawing around, and it looks like it's. It looks like if you left this thing now, it'd probably just die from that wound, that mortal wound. However, with one last ounce of strength, it okay. brings up the tail, lifts it up high, and just lets it drop down. And it doesn't look like it has the strength to lift it again, but if it lands on you, then it lands on you. Um, um one second. I'm just okay. Checking something. Well, you got. <laughs> um, you want to add an extra bit of damage because it's on one. <laughs> well, no, because it's got charges on it. Oh. From last session, I'm just trying to figure out how many it's got. There's one. Um, it has got one, two from that. Because you've hit it with two hellish rebukes now. No, you hit it with one. No, hellish I hit rebuke. it with one hellish rebuke. I hit it with an eldritch blast last. To pull eight. it back into the cloud of daggers. Yeah, I think this is only on two. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Okay. Um, <sighs> this is the last, last thing. If it doesn't, oh my lord. Okay, that's correct. That's gonna hurt. That's correct. Um, wait, 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 wait. No, I can't reduce 33 down. <laughs> no, you can't. It's fine. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it's fine. We go 35 plus another 48 for the crit. 48 makes it 16 plus. Plus a whopping 8d6 as well. Okay, it's it's fair to say you're probably going to go on consciousness. 8d6. 
How much damage okay. is that? Let's go. That is a total of, yeah, you're unconscious. Uh, 60, 70, 70 80, 80, yeah. 89, I think. That uh, is enough it... to bring Irina down in a single, single hit. Uh, Thankfully, that is. And I have still been standing. I'll cut the damage. Oh. Cut the damage. I'll cut the damage. Yeah, cutting words can you cut damage as well. I freeze! <laughs> Damn it, one more and I'd be fine! Oh, <laughs> oh my god. That is so unfortunate. Uh, first of all, unfortunate that it's alive on a single digit of health. And then even more unfortunate that Irina is over by a single digit. That hammer that just dropped, it looks like it kind of passes out afterwards as well. And the hammer just landing on top, like a scorpion tail coming over, and just cracks straight on top of Irina, smushing it basically between, probably crit because you're still on its back, and you're you're basically getting stabbed from below from its stony hide, and in, and then crushed from the top, just basically impaled on its back. It's the most gruesome scene you've ever seen. A football Irina, uh, I, I, Elias, it's your go. Uh, I'm going no. to charge in, jump oh. off of my horse in midair. What the hell? What's the 30 for? That is uh, regenerate. Ah, uh, yeah, and and as a crest over here, jump off my my horse and uh, cast thunderclap midair. Yeah, um, you know, if it, it does half damage, doesn't it? Nope. Yeah. It's Even a if save, save or die. Right? It's a save. What is it? It's cantrip. Oh, it's a cantrip. Okay. All right, then. I'll roll a quick... I'm going to try. Save. Yeah, you... Okay. I'm yeah. Saying, yeah, no damage, I guess. And I'll cast a healing word on Irina. Okay. Because... I was hoping it's for probably... an easy finish. You were looking for an easy finish, unfortunately. It's going to be... Maybe Karis needs to do the job. Karis right. just... Heal Irina. Just going to sort of look at it. Look at Elias, just like, why don't you just finish it off, you moron? Because <laughs> I was healing Irina. You just see Irina's hand underneath this thing going... <laughs> Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, well, gonna do a level, normal level shatter. Yeah, <laughs> aims perfectly so that the. <laughs> yep. The I saw where I. Arena, I saw kind of where I went down. It. Yeah, <laughs> I guess this shatter basically sends that tail off of them, shattering the tail into pieces, and just meat and viscera from underneath it just are erupted outwards, and Irina gets sent kind of bouncing away as this thing is shattered up against the wall and its body slumps onto the ground unmoving chunks of it left in a gory heap and that is going to end combat um, Chadnir reaches it through Kashan through the portal and touches your hand as the portal is closing and you see him plucking the golden string cast regenerate on you and you immediately feel your your ribs suddenly crack back into place and uh, yeah your internal bleeding is stopped and of course at the next minute you also recover one HP every round so that's an extra 10 HP yeah an extra 10 on top of that so you actually are now on 59 and the portal closes and says, Sorry, I can't be of much more help. Good luck. Bye. Bye. Yeah. It says, Swear to God. Oh, that was a... That was a bit scary. Yeah. I uh, lift Irina up, and I just... I start... don't need lifting. I just start walking up the wall with her. <laughs> up here. Covered in, like, chunks of meat and... Good job, I'm a Fruit Loop in a world of Cheerios. Mm. Yeah, I, I just walk her up the wall. Karis is going to whistle his glaive back over to him. 
Which everyone let's not do that again. Yeah, that was well. If that's what the welcome committee's like, hopefully the party will be much better inside. Yeah, that was... Did everybody survive? Yeah, those guys hit like a rock, quite literally. Yeah. I mean, maybe next time, don't walk directly up to slave traders and, you know, Well, I, I didn't know they were slave traders at the time. I, I mean, the dwarf guy did say that they took people as slaves. Yes, but I didn't yeah. know that that person in particular was one of them. He could be. Right, he could right. have been an escapee who recruited Earth Elementals to help him. Should we? By the way, just... I don't know what happened to the guy that fell down the hole mysteriously for no reason at all. Yeah, yeah. he's so, definitely dead. So, are we to assume that anyone not in shackles down there is probably a, tr a slave trader? Then, yeah, probably. Well. Maybe. Though... Let's not jump to assumptions yet. Though, potentially, that means we can maybe make some sort of slave rebellion thing happen, you know? Mm, but remember, guys, we've only got ten days to save Lavella, and we can't get caught up trying to free all the slaves. Well, we have ten days, but from what we've been told about some of the planes before, do we know that the time flows right here? anything you've, you've not heard any information on that yeah if being in the fey world has told us anything is we just can't wait <laughs> we need to get yeah. in and out quick as possible but i think we should probably have a quick break before we um head in so that we're at least a little bit more fighting fit yeah probably a good idea yeah I mean, I you look something. like shit <laughs> I so smell like it too. So did you two seconds ago. I don't know what you're talking about. In fact, I smell a... What is that? I literally peel a bit of intestine or something off my jacket and just like drop it. Is that number really? seven? <laughs> Probably. <Okay>. Yeah. <laughs> it's Chadel number five. Chadel. Chadel number five. Uh, Karius is going to fly over to where the hammer of this thing was and pick it up, see if it's still in one piece, the hammer. No, Chidel... Oh, I described it as being shattered by the mm. shatter spell. Chidel, yeah. Chidel number seven is Chad's cologne. Chidel number five is his uh, version of Mambo number five. Alright. That's a guy. Five. Well... <laughs> Um, That's a guy living in Weep. <laughs> Out for vengeance for his poor son. One, two, three, four guys. Wow. Is that um, <laughs> is that symbol that um, appeared above Andy when they got hit still there? It does seem to be slowly fading. Hmm. But yeah, it is still there for the moment. Considering that both me and Andy, I think, speak Terran, does it look like something we'd recognize? Like the what the room means? Hmm. It's not necessarily in Terran. It just... And it doesn't even look like a um, magical rune that would be, say, yeah. on a scroll or something. No, I thought just... it might be like a name or something. Like, you know, I brand mm. you as my slave. Right, right. No, doesn't look like a symbol you would be able to read. Um, I know Irina can read all languages, though. And I guess if they took a look at it... Quick, Irina, have a look. look at it. <laughs> I will take a look at it. If Karius points out, okay. I'm just going to be like... Yeah, there's a floating symbol above Andy's head that's slowly fading. Probably worth looking at. I get up off the floor and crawl my way to the... Oh, no. Um... He's already pulled me up there. Nice. Yeah. So, I'm still on the floor. You... Just roll over to Andy. Uh, okay, roll, so yeah. as you look at it, it doesn't seem to have any discernible language, so to speak, but it is something that you somehow understand as, as if just 
reading it, Candlewig, almost as if whispers the secrets to you and into your mind, and you understand the symbol to mean entropic. Entropic. And it's either properly entropic. That's really hard to say. Do, does the word mean anything to anyone? <laughs> because out of character, it kind of does, but in character, I don't know. You, you could roll an intelligence check to know what the word means. <laughs> I mean, assuming Andy got poisoned, probably poison. He didn't get poisoned necessarily. In fact, everyone resisted the poison in this this combat. But Except for Andy. She she didn't get hit by poison, right? No. She got slammed with the tail. Oh, okay. And it's the tail left it. Because you made her make a con save. The... That was for Cloud of Daggers, not yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that was with concentration. So entropy. Relating to effectively disorder, the state of uh, change. It's hard to say what it was going to do, but you can make an educated guess with a 12 on your intelligence check, but it's probably something bad. And that's all you Honestly, would know. my thought is. If it entropy is chaos and it's branding them with essentially chaos, it almost feels like, if anything, it's either marking them as a troublemaker or perhaps going to stop them being chaotic. So perhaps it might function like a whole person spell, potentially. But Karis doesn't know for certain. He's just like, well, um, if we meet someone friendly down there, maybe we can ask them. It's not likely to happen, but um, we want to take a quick cat nap before we head down. Yeah. Hi. Okay. No offense, hey. Kashan. You guys begin having a short rest. You can bend hit dice, restore warlock spell slots, bardic uh, inspiration. Yeah. Uh, it does and key. Push. Yes. You you get it back. I don't know if Andy does it this time. Uh, you You're need again, five it... levels in Bard, I think, to get it back. Oh yeah, no, I'm just rest. Okay yeah. then, yes, you both get back. Um, are the two Bards oh, playing their song of rest? We are. Well, I am. A... Double song. I would hope that uh, Andy would join in in the little ditty. Irina can as well. You can what? <laughs> no, I meant me. Oh, yeah. right. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Andy is speaking through Irina. Probably be uh, something soothing. Maybe something Studio Ghibli esque. All right. Enjoy your duet of rest. Do I get Sorry. that back on a short rest? Mine would be... Ah, and then that's long rest. Uh, I want to say it's D8 or a D10. It's a D10. Yes. Is it only one D10 or is it multiple? No, it's point? only one. Yeah, it just basically one. goes up in dice yeah. level, basically. Alright, so everyone gets an extra six. I appreciate that. Um... And well, I think Andy's at least 10 levels in Bard, right? Yeah, so, uh, level 11 Bard. So there's it's probably also that, because I don't think it goes up again. So another D10, I guess. Yep. Andy, do you want to roll a D10? And then... Considering Irina has the bag of holding and, and she know of the snuggle beast well they all do they've all used it at one point would any of them use that <laughs> oh, oh that no, was just the hit dice no, that's oh, just hit dice
Uh, we just need you to roll a d10 so that you can use your song of rest. Everyone would get an extra six from me. <sighs> well, Elias. Oh. Uh, only one more, but it's still better than nothing. One. Oh, summon. It's a nice duet. You just maybe need to work on the harmonies a little. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's new to the party, so... True. He'll get there. True. Hey. It's okay. We can't all be talented like Andy, you know. I'm just... used to performing alone. Okay. Yeah. Top tip for you, Elias. If you can get... Four enemies that are pretty dangerous next to each other. I can probably do some serious damage. Oh yeah, I, I I saw that. Yeah, yeah, but that was kind of um, the lower end of some of my ability, shall we say? I need to use a lot of healing. Yeah, I have not used all of mine, but because. I suspect we may need to short rest at least once whilst we're in there, so I'd rather save at least a few of them. So, I don't know if you healed Irene in terms of songs of rest, but that was 7 HP. And you also have the Snuggle Beast if you wanted to use it, because it's in the bag holding. I yeah. did heal Irene. I did. I did, yeah. But then, yeah, you have yeah. the Snuggle Beast, which is 2d6. Gotta to, got to get was, the most out of that snuggle beast. I was still on six when I opened my sheet to start rolling hit dice, though. No, so we you got healed for. Um, you got healed for one from Andy. Mm. Oh, so yeah, you do need another seven. Yeah, the six was from the healing word. There you go. And then you need uh, to roll two d six for your snuggle beast. Oh my god. Uh, how, how close am I right now? Seven. One more. I guess one more. <laughs> That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. I'm one away. I, <laughs> I, have, I have so much HP that. I forget. Do, do monks get their um, key back on short rest? Yep. They. Do. they... Yep. They do. do? Mm hmm. In which case, it's only me where my special resource doesn't come back on a oh, short I rest. Get, I get half back on a short rest, I believe. Really? I can never remember how key works. <laughs> you get it all back. Oh. That's why there's always benefits to short resting. The only class which really doesn't get the benefit is the sorcerer, I think. Um... Yeah. Starting at first level, you get key back on a short rest. Oh, cool. Yeah. You just have to spend 30 minutes of the rest meditating. That's fine. I think it's a long rest to get spells back for yeah. a bard. Yeah. The only ones it's who happy. get sh short rest spells back are um, warlocks. Well... I've not used and anything um, too major. During this meditation, Kashan, that you just feel a slight bremer through the ground. But it seems to be getting stronger. Uh, any kind of like location, direction? Definitely coming from the bottom of that can canyon there. Are you... Are you two no. still looking looking somewhat rough? Yeah, Sorry. I'm at sixty out of eighty nine. Okay, I'm gonna I... pop an aura. I might pop an aura of vitality just to get you guys up, so we don't have a if you rough want time. Yeah, it's only third level. Let's get out of, out of combat healing. Yeah, you see, so see all these musical notes, like come from his uh, Leah, and they just sort of float 
in your guys' direction. I can basically do in a minute twenty d six. Yep. So I'll give you both ten d six each. Nice. So that can go to Carius. And that puts me to full. That to Irena. Oh, there you go. And tack close. Just... Chris, is, Chris, Chris is smiling face. So thank God there's a, a, like a full healer in the party. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like I couldn't do a single point of healing. Uh, Elias actually filled that niche quite, quite well. All right. So, feeling much better. Everyone's ribs fixed. Everyone's face is unbrushed. Uh, it's over the course of this short rest, Kashan, the trembling rumble would get louder and louder and it's probably as you finish the rest you start to see down at the very bottom of the canyon there you see the little pebbles near the fallen mountain begin to kind of shake they kind of tremor and slowly some of them begin rolling towards it and you see it's only its head that's been shattered and its head seems to just be slowly connecting piece by oh, piece. Oh, I don't like the piece. look of that. Um, I think we need to go before that thing Down gets back up. Yeah. Um, oh, but like if people are like just kind of staring awake, I'll just kind of wake up the nearest person and just kind of point to the tremor. Yeah. Karis is okay. going to. We should probably start moving soon. Yep, Karis is going to fly down there on his glaive. And... I throw a guy plummet to his near death or assumed death down there. I'm not jumping. Yep. Well, um, um, one I... of you can hitch... Actually, if one of you hitches a ride on uh, the glaive of Karis, one can hitch with Elias, and then Kushan has his slow fall thing. Yeah, I'm... Yeah. I'm okay. I'll, I'll pass along the horse to the girls. I'm gonna walk down the wall. I'm gonna walk down the wall. That that makes sense. Not that not that you guys know know what's gonna happen, but he's just gonna walk down the wall. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like if so I like piece. obviously with my uh, special dark vision, can I see down the hole before we jump down there without looking? You you can, and there is a bottom. Some forty feet down. Hmm. That's not too bad. Yeah. As we're descending down, Taclo's gonna fly over and land on Irina's shoulder and just pluck a bit of viscera out of the hair. You had a, you had this in your hair. Just flick it off before flying back. I, I imagine I kind of smell like barbecue right now. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He he found a bit of lung in your hair. <gasps> <laughs> Yeah. Um, it's at this point as you uh, probably Karis and Elias have gone down first. Irina and Andy are just considering jumping. Um, there's no obvious stairwell or anything at this point. It's just a forty foot drop down I'm, into I'm not jumping. No, they're on the okay. back of Elias's horse. Okay, you're on the back. I think one of you could probably fit. No, yeah, well, uh, Elias is well. Elias is walking down the stairs, but oh, two yeah. and Both walking Andy down and the wall. Yeah, yeah, that's yep. fine then. Yep, uh, and Kashan can jump because monk. Yeah, Kashan can jump, but just saying that as you get down there, Kashan, you see the the head is fully formed. There are still cracks in it, but it's at that point the eyes kind of glow into place. And this thing is kind of laying down. But it's it's putting its fist down onto the ground to slowly heave itself back up. Oh, it's and as back it's getting up. up and it's making this grinding sound as all the rocks are like rumbling on its body, you can hear it. It's speaking in Terran. That rumbling is a language you understand. And it says in a deep grinding tone, it says that is a place of hidden riches. That is a wall 
against all foes. And it is a grave for the greedy. As in down here? I'll just call out to it again. <laughs> it, like, there's a very slow nod as it's getting up to its feet. His head is still, like, fixing itself every crack. Not greedy, well, just want one diamond. <laughs> <laughs> An enlightenment for Kashan. Well, our path is on a of an honest one. We we just want to help our friend and get out. This is nothing against you or your kind, and I do apologize for what we have done. But I promise, no, it will. Apologies. I should be thanking you. Oh, we freed him. Oh? He was a slave. Our kind is enslaved. As are all who come into contact with the Tao. The Tao? Oh, Dao, okay. Yeah, D-A-R. You know these to be Earth Genie. Gotcha. They're yeah. the ones who have enslaved your kind. Yeah. Well, we'll do what we can to help you. We... We have our own path ahead of us, but we will, we will do what we can. I promise you that. And I will safeguard the entrance. And as, as he says this, he begins shadowing the the massive chasm. You kind of like jump down, slow fall, and you're looking up as this this head sort of just rises over and blocks out the last gap of sunlight that's kind of peering in and I'll drag you to a new map uh, I'll just quickly call out before th thank you what's your name uh, it just says I am the walking mountain I am the gate to the sevenfold maze and a, with that, just, <laughs> is that is that the short version <laughs> you get the idea that with these kind of creatures um that he probably tells you he says we are born from earth terror is our name we are rock and rubble. Our forms are only as such because we are bound, enslaved. He gestures around towards the vast desert and the, the cave that you now stand in and says, You stand within the element this is our true form. This is how we are free. And then he, he raises up his hands and leans forward and you see its head and its facial cracked mouth and eyes. And he says, this is our enslaved form. I do kind of want to call in Dwayne the Rock, but <laughs> uh... now that's his son. This is this is Dwayne the Mountain. 
<laughs> but I'll give him a a wave, and uh, I think I'm waiting for the rest of the group. Uh, they're all down here already, in fact. I'll just have them oh, drag okay. their tokens on. Feel free to drag your tokens on. This is more of an art page than it is a dungeon now. So I'll just update them on uh, <laughs> on what Dwayne said. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, it's very nice. As you, yeah. As you descended down some forty feet. You smell the air is now, it's very musty down here, it's almost like stale air, but you can smell the clay in the rocks. You can actually smell a wet earth as well, a wet soil. It seems it is deep enough that it has perhaps breached just a small pool of water, and indeed that is the only thing that is reflecting the gap of light that is shining through here. And as you look down, you realize you've kind of descended onto a slope, nay, a staircase. It's kind of been very makeshift, carved out of the, the actual ground itself, out of the rock face. And as you look around, it's hard to find any level ground. You're just sort of standing on a, a sloped staircase, and you, you can find in the dark recesses of this cave that there are more tunnels leading which way and that some go lower some seem to go straight on some seem to just be bumpy and maybe they don't even lead anyway maybe there's just rubble in the way and it's kind of caved in but there's all kinds of different directions which you can head in you're not just in a one tunnel kind of situation it looks like a labyrinth down here like a network like an ant's nest so, lead the way, Catman. Yeah, I'll, I'll push on in. Oops. Which, which way do you go? There are uh, potentially four different directions you can head in. It is not a linear path. Um, and you know, this being called the Sevenfold Maze, you might, you might realize this is already the start of it. <clears throat> Uh, thinking back to my readings, was there any yeah. initial kind of like, this was the way I went first? Yep. Okay. So if you recall that and perhaps even pull it out to give it a quick skim and refresh yourself, yeah. you remember Lodovu outlined the first region. He said that... <clears throat> The outermost region of the Sevenfold Maze was populated by thousands of Dao, even more of their slaves. This place is unmappable. Even though it is earth and tunnels, the place constantly shifted. You could you can forget about trying to remember which way you came. It is a constantly shifting maze. I can hear the tunnel collapsing behind me, as well as the next one opening before me. The tremors they seem to be periodic, but when they do come, it's not just the danger of being lost, it's also the danger of being crushed or being trapped. And that's if, and if you're lucky enough to survive, then you have the slavers to contend with. The Dao are obsessed with them. They lord their power over others. But they have, they have built a magnificent wonder within here. I finally stumbled upon it. An immense market or so-called free market almost all imaginable goods were for sale here i remember there's commodities for both visitors slaves and dow alike look for the glowing gems 
They will, they will perhaps guide your way. They sit atop great pillars. They're the only thing that provided light in this region. That's it. That's uh, that's kind of what the first outlying information. Uh, uh, is there any kind of light coming from any of the tunnels? Yeah, you can roll a perception check. Perception. Uh, uh, mm. what? Well, not at the moment. There doesn't seem to be any visible light. Almost every tunnel is as dark as the next. But I will say, with a 12, you don't see anything, but you do pick up on a sound. And it is the sound of clink, clink, and then a shudder and a rumble. And then again, kind of clink, clink. Sounds like metal on stone. Okay. It sounds like it's echoing, like it, it's deep within one of these tunnels. Okay. Uh, so once again, I'll liaise with the group um, of the reading, uh, just in regards to, well, the pillars in particular. No. Um, um... Okay. I know we're obviously down here for the squall and to find the diamonds. Um, and uh, obviously with that level in, I'm not sure how we can do it, but Andy's dad is supposedly down here somewhere. If we can maybe... I don't know. I, I can't do it, but I don't know if any of you can track or scry like Lavellan could. Certainly not something I can do. It would at least maybe give us a direction. Uh, no. Uh, Elias, can you do anything like a locate object sort of spell or anything like that? I don't think I can. I could move some earth. I can make a passageway for us if we need to get somewhere through. Actually, what rings did we put on your ring of spell storing? Um, Wasn't one of those I, a locate spell? And also locate object as was stored. But the locate object we need for the diamond, right? Yeah, but it could um, it could at least we need put... locate person because we don't know if Andy's dad has an on him. A locate object might get us at least in the direction of where more things are likely to be. If he's looking for a items to cast that spell didn't he need a diamond for that I think so yeah so if we go for the diamonds that's the most likely place to find him right if is there a specific to it can I cast it to look for what are we looking for a thousand gold diamond two thousand gold diamond I think we just need a 300 gold one to be honest but the better we well actually if we're looking for what's the one needed for the spell that andy's dad did the... uh that was clone right that was a really expensive one a thousand really gold a thousand gold diamond mm -hmm. so but that only works if it's within a thousand feet so if this place is full of gems and diamonds, surely there'll be one within, you would hope? You'd hope, but it might be worth saving it for if we're... I mean, we're right at the beginning now. We can probably at least ex explore a little bit and try to find a way through. Yeah. Um, Maybe wait, wait till we get a day's travel. I mean... If I look up, we're still kind of like 40 feet down, roughly, right? Yep. You can still see the daylight of the Claude Coast. You can still feel the heat bearing down. Which is also <clears> a point. <throat> if we can still see the light, have we even entered the Earth Domain yet? It's a good question. That's a good point. Because I don't... F I f isn't... Shouldn't we not be able to see the previous plane if we're in the next one from our 
I can't say I've never ever been to another plane of existence. Well, we went to the well, fire plane. Time. Well, when when I left, but that didn't exactly have windows. When I left, the shadow fell and came here. I couldn't see the shadow fell behind me. Well, okay. from from what what wasn't it that the sevenfold maze led to the earth plane? All the way around. <clears throat> The Earth plane maze resides within the Earth plane. Yeah. But, and there was also saying about a hidden fulcrum, I think. Supposedly, the center of the maze, supposedly a, a vault of some sort. It's the, uh, the, it was like a rhyme or something that we were given, what we found. But mm -hmm. the vault only opened when the entrance closes right wasn't it something like that i don't know but... let me see if i can find it for you okay, yeah, okay. Maybe we the should guy who in. fell down here has obviously gone walkies and he was obviously one of the slavers right okay. footprints that's a good okay. give me a survival check i'll i'll assist i will attempt my own survival check I mean, do you want to do it and I will assist? I mean, I've got um, I've got plus I six on my side. You do it and I assist because. How, how about I, I do it because I've got plus six on it. How about I do it? <laughs> yeah, we're about okay. even on survival. Said, I'll repeat the um the riddle that you heard. One stone mill grinds to a halt only when the sevenfold maze aligns. As one cave opens. The hidden fulcrum closing. That was yeah, you're right. We should let Andy thing. do it. Andy, Andy does this sort of thing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, actually, we're looking for treasure. Yeah, let Andy lead. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so Irina, it's hard to start. You're picking around footprint. The ground here is pretty hard, and it doesn't look like it would leave prints, so to speak. However, Andy, being from the desert. You know that the sand gets everywhere. If you come into town or into your uh, home, you'd seem to trail it. Even if you've worn sandals and tried to keep your robes up, it's sand just seems to fly everywhere. And as you look around, you know that guy got onto the surface. And sure enough, you start to see little specks of it leading off into one of the tunnels, the deeper one, the actual staircase that, that runs down into a kind of pool of water. And then as you follow it, Looking over to the other side, you can actually see there are wet footprints leading on from said puddle as well. All I'm seeing is there's Elias and Irina both with spy glasses looking for footprints, and Andy just sort of comes in like, just out of the way. Yeah, I do have a spy glass. <laughs> Amateurs. Right, yeah. so that way it's then, Andy. Ahead, give away. The woods. To be fair, I can't survive in the woods either, so um, there's that. Well, normally you'd burn them down first, so... I'm, exactly. I'm burn more into, first, worry I'm, later. I'm more into echolocating, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Knocking on the wall, it's like... <laughs> right. I'm not good at survival. So we're going <laughs> to follow that guy then. Honestly, quite Ooh. impressed he survived that fall. We kind of should probably find him before he alerts his buddies. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> As you begin heading down, oh, those Traeger tokens, you begin heading this direction, and a few of you are now made aware of this loud plinking noise, that hammering in the deep, that rubble occasionally falling away. It, that sings sing the tune and it's literally the we, song from Snow White where they mine <laughs> yes. Yes, it is. Right. Ooh, so as you get deeper you're following the sound the tunnel up ahead begins to get more and more claustrophobic and you can see jagged rocks hanging from the ceiling you kind of actually have to like push past and maneuver through. 
And you travel for about a good five to ten minutes through this tunnel, navigating it. And it, it's strange, because although you're going on a downward slope, it feels harder and harder to move forward. Almost as if you're going uphill. The, the weight on your legs increases. Anyone who's wearing armor, the armor begins to kind of feel heavier on your shoulders. And uh, even Egba is like slowly weighing you down, Kasha. <laughs> And you're sure you're going downhill, it should be an easy descent. But it feels like you're going up. Uh, eventually, all light is completely faded away as you go through twist and turn. The light that was flooding through the entrance is now all but gone. So for those without dark vision, you are utterly blind right now. I was going to say, if it starts to get dark, um, I start like positioning everyone conga line style. And I'll have Andy at the front, because she's obviously leading the way, but I'll hold on to her shoulders. Uh, her. How, how is so Andy going to continue to lead and the way? can't see. She can hear. <laughs> can she not? <laughs> Me, are we good to light a torch? I will be wise. Uh, Are we good to light a torch down here? Maybe. Or, Irina, can anything. you, like, conjure a flame in your hand or something? Can we smell gas? You don't smell gas, no. Alright. Uh, what can I see? I'll, I'll, I'll light a torch. And I'll place it on the oh. front wall. Oh. Just, just wait a oh. minute. Okay. I, I can see in the dark. Let me have a scope round before you go lighting things and signaling where we are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, Arena. If you do want to check and scan ahead, you can give me a perception check. Thirteen. Not great. Mm. Thirteen. You can just hear the hammering, clink sound, clink, clink, and the occasional kind of rubble, perhaps being dislodged from a nearby ceiling. Definitely sounds like pickaxes from here. But, um... I don't see anything moving in the area. Or not, I not up ahead, no. You, you gather that sound must travel all the way up these tunnels. Some hundreds of feet. It's the only where... It's the only place sound has to go. So it all kind of gets funneled and just sent down the, the tunnels. So wherever the sound is, it could be maybe hundreds of meters away, or it could be around the corner. All right. Torch? Yep, you can light the torch. I light the torch, and I place it in the head of the horse, like a flaming unicorn horn. So you've actually got the light cantrip? No, I'm... No, it's a torch. Planet. No, it's a torch. Oh, sorry, it's a torch. <clears throat> I didn't yeah. even... Uh, yes, a torch is fine for now. It is not suddenly exploding or anything like that. Uh, no, you didn't smell gas. The torch does produce some light down here. And... So Andy can see. Yeah, now Andy, you can see a little bit clearer in the dimness and darkness of this place. You can at least see where your feet are going. That's helpful. Sure. Thank you. Um, it's as you light this torch that you suddenly see another light blink on in the distance. It's, it's probably about... Mm, probably about, like, 80 foot away from you. But it's unmistakable. As soon as you lit your torch, some another light source appears in the very darkest recesses of this uh, stalag-ridden cave. I swipe my hand in front of the torch to create like signals to see what would happen it signals <laughs> okay like what are you attempting to signal like... yeah horse card like flashing it yeah okay uh 
sure. Uh, you signal the, the other light source. The clinking stops. And the the light source up ahead, it seems to be moving. Maybe it's getting closer. I don't know what I just did. What but did maybe we should pre prepare ourselves. What did you signal? I you didn't sig send a mo your mama joke, did you? Because they don't like that. I, I was no. actually going to say the set. Did you accidentally insult his mum? No, I signaled that we were friendlies. Hmm. If they understand Morse code. Hmm. All right. Um, duck into the shadows. <laughs> yeah. Put the torch out. Yeah. You hear? If, okay, you're hiding. They're gonna be looking for people. Yeah, we put the torch out. <laughs> okay. Um, you put the torch out. Everyone can give me a stealth check then. And as you're looking for a stalactite to hide behind or a stalagmite, um, like twenty-four with disadvantage. Watch Andy just vanish. Oh yeah, disadvantage with that. <laughs> Even though you got this, you rolled a 24. So you find the perfect stalactite behind behind. And the light gets closer and you start to hear the shuffling sound. And then you hear a kind of hear a, a loud kind of bestial huff. Um, and um I guess the only way to describe it is uh, someone calling out backwards, but it's not in any language. Wait, hold on. Yes, a lot of you do understand this section. <laughs> just realized most of you can understand because actually, oh, I'll just double check. Language. I speak I know all. Kishan can. Kishan I understands all languages. I speak all four primordial languages. It's not that. Um, I also speak Dwarvish, no, Ig no. Uh, Infernal. That's it sounded almost, okay, then in that case, it almost sounded Infernal, but it, it definitely wasn't Infernal. Um, uh, so probably the like other really, one. It sounded, it's weird to say, but it sounded like a rough kind of mooing sound. Like, oh. It's an abyssal cow. <laughs> Human cow. <laughs> so you heard, and after that you hear a th another shuffle, and then a thud, thud, thud as le like heavy footfalls begin to get further away. Like whatever that thing was, it came up to the cave entrance where you were. You're hey. all pretty well hidden, and turned it back around and went back. At least we know that's what direction those are in. Hmm. What did it say? I mean, Kishan understands all language. What did he say? Oh, yeah. So Kishan's the only one that actually understood what the hell that said. And. Sorry, I'm just um... making food. I'll reiterate. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. It said, <clears throat> thought I saw something. But best get back to work. Well, so maybe they're slaves if they're working. Do we want to head that way? Or... I guess... I mean, if the guy managed to get away without getting in trouble, it means they don't have a supervisor down here right now. Well, that's Possibly. Yeah. I mean, he said best get back to work, so I assumed he'd be one of the miners. The, the, the hammering sound stopped when he came. Which now resumes, actually, as you say that. So, clink, clink. we can maybe friendly? I mean, Kishan can talk to them, so...
Catman? You could always wanna... have a sneak up there and see what's going on. Wanna go speak to the locals? Yes, I would like to speak to the locals. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, then. In that case, you come out of your little hiding spots and begin heading in that direction. Just as you get up and out of there as well, everyone feels an incredibly large and loud tremor shake through the ground. Uh, everyone could just give me a quick strength saving throw. <clears throat> oh, why strength? <sighs> strength saving throw. Yeah, okay. Yeah, strength sucks. What if I'm hovering? <laughs> I'm not hovering. It's probably... Yeah, no, I didn't think I, you were hovering. I, I, I just mentioned everything feels heavy as well. Uh, I, oh, that looked like fails across the board, by the way. Yeah, how tall yeah. is this tunnel? Uh, it gets more and more cramped the further you get in. So Yeah, yeah I'm walking. Then. Okay. I, I'm uh, well, crawling at this rate. But it, where you are at the moment, where you're hiding, it does seem a little bit taller, and there's uh, hanging stalactites above. And I'm afraid every everyone failed that one. So let's bring out the old improvised damage chart. Um, the thundering, thundering tremor seems to shake throughout the whole tunnel. You can't tell a discernible location where it's coming from. It just feels like it's all around you. And as everyone falls prone, literally everyone, you, no one is able to stand up from this immense tremoring. It's almost as if all the weight that's on your shoulders, you finally give way, give out, and you, you just all collapse to the ground. And as you fall to the ground, looking up, you suddenly see it dislodged from the ceiling. Uh, a number of stalactites do dislodge and fall down. And I need now, God, everyone to roll a deck save with disadvantage. <laughs> Disadvantage. <laughs> because you're all prone. And uh, this. Oh, God. Oh, it's getting impaled. Shield. Oh, dear. You can. You want to shield it? I'll let you shield it if you want. Even though it's not oh, an attack, no, not, not shield, shield master. Oh, I rolled that. Evasion. Evasion is uh, a thing. I just rolled well, is what I mean. So, shield. Yeah. Okay. I don't have that spell, sadly. It's not oh. fatal, but 24 piercing damage to those who got below a 15. And for those who've got evasion, still take just half of that. <clears throat> so, Kishan, you take 12, 12 points of piercing damage. Oh. And the rest... Uh, Elias, you were able to completely avoid it, roll out of the way. Kishan does, yeah. Monkey version. Yep. Yeah. Seventh level. All monks get it. <clears throat> I can't remember him ever using it. <laughs> I can, I can remember him saying quite a lot. Evasion! <laughs> Um, so, so Elias, you've got Shield Master, right? So you avoid all of it. Oh, wait, no, Kashan failed it, so. Is that right? Shield Master, you can evade all of it? Yeah. Yep. It's either okay. all or nothing. And then, Irina, you managed to avoid most of it, but the from being on the ground, trying to roll out of the way, uh, you end up just getting bits of it kind of land on you, scratching you and... and uh, it's a near miss. You don't just get impaled, but you do take half of that, which is only 12 points. Sorry. Yeah, it is 12 points of damage. So everyone gets a, a light impaling from these. Let me just do it all for you. There you go. <clears throat> oh, sorry, Elias, you didn't take any. Yeah, you have that health back. Let's take this. And... Time. After that, you're expecting for something horrible to happen after that, but or the tunnels to collapse behind you. You wait a moment longer, and the tremor seems to move and shift. Like you can hear it 
going deeper into the earth. I feel and like then, that might be the door closing. <laughs> it feels like the tremor's moving like through the wall. Like you can hear it like a stereo where it goes from one side of the, the cavern around overhead and then behind you. And it's like, almost as if you can imagine a great worm sort of slithering through the earth, causing these these tremors. And then right where you started, back where you began, some 10 minutes down the tunnel, you will hear a tremendous crack as rubble collapses. And you see a dust cloud below down the tunnel from which you just came. Like the earth has just swallowed you whole. And these stalactites are like teeth that are chewing you up. Ow. You guys okay? Yeah. Um, oh, was, I was feeling a bit rocky there, but I'm good. You get pebbled. Yeah, we should probably get going. Nip the doors closing, potentially. Yeah. Oh. What's that noise? I do hear distant, like, distant shouting from down the tunnel. It's muffled, though, as the tremors are still kind of drowning it out. It sounds like speech, though. Uh, if we head that way, there's at least someone there, but it could be someone in trouble. All right, do we go find out? We're heading that way anyway, right? I guess. Yeah. Um, you good with that, Angie, as well? As you're leading the way, sort of, at the moment? Yeah, so long as we don't end up getting sidetracked. Yeah. We have a time, time frame. We do yeah. need someone who... Why am I picking up your accent now? <laughs> we do need someone who maybe knows the way through. Or at least can point us in ways not to go. Mm. So if we help someone in need, potentially get information as a... Yeah. I could say, as long as we don't get too sidetracked. Well, no, we've got nine days. We, we can't afford to get distracted. Mm. Okay. Um, as you're laying there on the ground, just agreeing to get not to get sidetracked, I'm guessing uh, you get, you're trying to get up to your feet. And as you do, you didn't experience it before because you were all kind of standing and it was a gradual increase. But now as you try to get up, the gravity in here has most definitely increased. It's it's noticeable immediately as you try to get try to get up. And effectively, this isn't going to be a roll for anyone, but what effectively it means is now everyone is moving at half their speed. Treat it like difficult terrain. And yeah, everyone has to strain just to get off their feet. It's like they gained like half of their weight again in in pounds. Feels like you were holding on to like <laughs> boulders in your joints. Everything feels stiff. Everything feels heavy. And if you're making your way that down that tunnel, your footfalls are heavier. It's like thud, thud as you're moving. All right. Do you know what? If we're making too much noise, I could. <clears throat> Probably go on ahead and stare enough silently and invisibly. Okay. If, if we want me to go and have a look first. Um, once I do it, I'm probably going to stay this way for a while. Yeah. Sure. Um, so I'm going to turn myself into a cloud of smoke. You see my form kind of rush forward and it just scatters. I um, can... just about like a. I almost look like Candlewick. Kind of. I can trail this. behind if you don't want to be alone. Um, and this lasts for an hour. Okay. Um, all right. If you're going to use that, then let me drag you on. You going stealthily? Yeah. Give me a um a stealth check, then, please. And it's at this point, Carius, you notice your glaive is, it's weighing you down 
and normally your glaive is light. It almost feels like you can lift. If anything, your glaive feels like it lifts you up, and it's it's not something you steady yourself on. It's something that you normally hold mm -hmm. and have it pull you along. And now the, the the glaive is now like you're having to you're having to push it along with you, forcefully. Mm -hmm. uh, Irina, as a cloud of smoke, I'm going to give you advantage as well because you're making no sound. And uh, that that just breezes across the ground. Mm. Yeah, it's a bit better. Seventeen. All right. So you are now on another map. Uh, the clinking sound is directly to the left. There is another passageway south as well that's in complete darkness. But uh, about this distance, as you're traveling maybe 30, 50 feet ahead of now the party, you can see there is a light source from where that clinking sound is coming from, but it's fairly dim. But uh, I guess you can start to make out figures in the darkness, and one of them is the, la the larger one has this big set of horns, and uh, it turns in your direction, and then turns back. I just kind of put myself up against the wall in the shadows and sort of yeah. sidle my way along. <laughs> okay. And the, the clinking, clinking sound is also accompanied by a dragging of chains. Um, are, are all the people in this area like that? No, there are varying sizes. Some seem to be about medium, some seem to be shorter than that. Uh, quite stout looking, um, broad shoulders. But the, the largest is definitely uh, with with huge set of horns. And you can see oh, in no, one I mean, hand... are, they, are they all chained? Oh yeah, yeah. All of them. There's no one yeah. in this room that's not. Nope. Okay, and because we heard sort of like muffled noise, do any of them look injured? Do any of them look... Injured? Injured. Um, no, actually. Like they were affected by the shaking. No, but you'd have to get closer to make, to like really have a good look at them and examine them, but just from here, you can see they're probably all working, so they're none of them like laying on the ground like her. They're, they're all kind of working, you can see their over their overhead swings into the earth. Um, I'm going to move a little bit closer, um, sticking to the shadows sure. still. Okay, you begin to make a, a view of numbers now. And this close you can see the figures. Two of the stout ones, the slightly shorter than medium, are two pairs of dwarves. Sorry, a single pair of dwarves. Uh, their face is caked in soot and grime and soil. Uh, there is a smaller figure, probably the smallest of them all, is, uh, it seems to be kind of like pulling against the chain. It is a goblin, uh, completely bare-chested. He's, he's basically down to his, his undies, and he's got scars all over his shoulders and arms. The poor guy looks like he's been whipped you can see marks across his back, and uh, you can see iron, uh, what are they called, iron wrist locks. Manacles. <clears throat> Manacles. Manacles are probably really tight around him. Um, and then going off behind uh, behind him is a bold human man with a, a really gruff looking beard. He seems to be like straining, his back is almost humped. Uh, he's almost stripped down to the bare bone as well, but he has a pickaxe in one hand, and um, he's got a bandage around the other arm, so he's kind of he's picking at the, the earth with one arm. And then finally the Minotaur, very clearly top half of a, a humanoid muscular man, uh, the head of a bull, two horns, seem to be um, quite chipped and uh, the cloven hooves of a bull as well. 
and he seems to be scraping away at the dirt every time he hits the wall he then scrapes it away with a hoof they haven't noticed you though are any of them pokemons themselves or are they all just yeah you can well you did hear them say something before but they they seem to have got back to work now um they're just kind of grunting and huffing um, but after a moment or two, just kind of observing them, um, you do hear probably one of the dwarves speaks in dwarven, so you would understand that, right? Yep. yep. They, they say, um, great. That tunnel collapsed behind us, or at least in front of us. We're going to have to go and clear it now. Should we check with the... Should we check with the master first? And, um... The Minotaur sort of turns around. His sunken shoulders. He places the pickaxe upon them. And, um... He, without words, begins to drag the chain. And he seems to be at the front of the chain. And he seems to pull everyone else along with him. Ah! Alright, alright! I guess that's a yes. Um, you start to see them heading in your direction. Yeah, I'm a, um, like, because obviously I can, I can floaty floaty. Yeah. Uh, go more towards the ceiling and kind of, like, because I imagine it's darker up there, and then just kind of go back towards the group. I was actually not even joking. I was about to mention this. As the Minotaur stomps his way towards you, you notice there's a load of splintered bone on the ground, and he crunches on it a first few steps, looks down, and then he places one hoof against the wall, another hoof against the wall, and begins making his way up onto said ceiling, where there isn't as much debris, and as he tugs on the chain, you see one by one, the, the dwarves begin to walk, sideways up the wall and towards the ceiling. Oh, hi. Um, I'm gonna fly back to the group. Sure. Okay. You um, go around the corner and then from a some fifty feet towards your party. Um, yeah, I'm gonna basically uh, Candlewick style sort of start swooping around them to get them to like pull up against the walls. Because obviously these guys are incoming this direction. Uh, Karis just goes, right, okay. Um, and just sort of tries can to I, hide. I'm wondering if I can do this. If everyone kind of huddles, can I get Candlewick as well and give enough cover to shadow everybody? Like a giant yeah, you would, you would, blanket. Yeah, you would, you would definitely lightly obscure them. Yeah, Which will give them like advantage on a, on a stealth check. Yeah. Okay. Uh, everyone here is the kind of stomping of hooves coming towards you guys. And then the dragging of chains. Which, by the way, Arena, you now notice the chain isn't dangling from the ceiling either. The chain is being dragged against the ceiling. That's where gravity went. That's where gravity went. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so... You guys are obscuring, uh, you're obscured and you're in the shadows of this kind of deep cave where the stalactites have all collapsed. And uh, you can start to see the semblance of this chain gang uh, clearing away rubble, uh, cracking any broken stalactites out of the way, kind of just clearing debris. And then they seem to be getting to work immediately on this, this cave in. That's what you all see. Why are there two Kashans? <laughs> this, this is displacement. <laughs> um, Karish just keeping his voice low. What's the plan? So, I know all... my room to pass. Yeah. So that they're, they're all friendly apart from the bull. They're all chained together, yeah. But the 
Bull's leading them. Almost like the leader of a right? chain gang, <laughs> I guess. So... We could take out the Bull and rescue the other four? I, well, the Bull also seems to be chained. Yes. But that's because he's the one dragging them. No, but he's chained no, he's... up. He's manacled as well. It's like he's also one of them. I'm so guessing he's aren't... just the leader of the work gang. But why aren't any of them trying to escape? There's, There's no one around. They've been watched. Or they've been beaten down so much that they don't think escape's possible. Huh. So, All right. Wait, wait from are you are you able to change your your image? Um, um yes. I could put on a disguise. <laughs> Karis just goes, yes. Well if you have anything like the manacles that they're using, you could pretend to be one of them and say you got lost from your group. They fell down a chasm. <sighs> hmm. I probably have some manacles, but not like those. Karis considers this. And I don't think I've got any. Do I have any manacles in my disguise kits? My prop manacles? Prison disguise. Uh, <laughs> roll a. I don't know, roll a d100. We'll say on a 30 or. Lower, you you have some. Ah, oh, so no, close. You do, you, I don't know. Yeah, I some... spent the night at Chad's. He might have picked some up. Yeah, that's what <laughs> I was saying. I, I have some manacles. They're just not that kind. Robin had <laughs> yeah. a fake passport and a wooden duck. <laughs> the, 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 didn't, the... didn't we have? Didn't we? Didn't we all have manacles in the in the curse breakers because we took them Fluffy from manacles? No, no, that was specifically <laughs> <kid. I'm laughs> like when we were. Um, Against the people of Valaki, the, the guards on that. Didn't we have manacles from that? I don't remember. But, even if we did have manacles, I'm not sure how we'd blend in, because it seems like they can walk on the ceiling, and the only one who can do that is Elias. Though, I'm wondering. Can't we all? It, maybe the gravity in here is different. Yeah, I I, can't I talk. I'm a cloud. Yeah, I I will walk up the ceiling, yeah. but I'll also try and drag Andy with me because she can't see. Sure, I, Karis Thank is you. just sort of looking at them and just like. Mm. Okay, if you've um, if you feel like at hand, grab yours, and you can begin leading her up the wall and and as you place your first foot up against the wall it was easier than the first few steps you've been taking against the floor that's for sure and it becomes gradually easier to step up onto the wall and then finally onto the ceiling but you still feel a heaviness it hasn't completely gone away but you could say it's ma it's more manageable and yeah, you also realize it's at this point you're standing on the ceiling without any kind of magical aid whatsoever. Karis is going to also just <laughs> try walking up the wall, see if he can. And see yeah, if it makes it, his glaive any lighter. Takes some getting used to, but there isn't actually much to it. Placing one foot in front of the other, you simply transfer your weight onto the wall and then onto the ceiling and you don't feel like you're falling down but you don't feel like you're falling up either you just feel a continuous pressure of gravity around you so do we all want to be chained together particularly why I mean, for the sake of blending in do we want to be chained together because I, I could try and make that happen. If we want to blend in as our own little chain, daisy chain. 
does speak. Is that what we want? Irina? Oh, Irina still smoke. Um, wisp left for yes, wisp right for no. Can she hear us? Yeah, but I... Um... Wisp left for yes, wisp right for no. What was the question again? Do, do we all want to disguise ourselves by chaining ourselves up? Like they were. Like I don't know why own... you're asking me. I'm not being chained. I'm a clown. But you seem like the smartest one here. Not that. I'm, I'm just talking to myself right now. I, she seems I, like the smartest one um... here. Am I right to ask I'm them? Smart. They've, There's a difference. They've gone. Yeah, so what you hear is the dwarf says, All right. I'll assess in the damage here. It's clear to me this is going to take more than just one chain gang. Uh, I um, take... Yeah. Well, they all say, also, looks pretty dangerous. Are we going to... We'll loop around um, and inform the... Uh, the warden, and uh, you just hear the minotaur sort of huff, sigh, and then pulls the chain, and uh, you see them like get all kind of lurched along with it, and then the dwarf's like, huh, "Glad we agree." Okay. You hear kind of a, a slight sob from the human, and and then the goblin's just like. Ah! He seemed to be like he was like bent down. The chain seemed to have like got him on the neck, and he's like, ah. he like moves it around. He's like, ah. I wonder. He's that he's actually left a pickaxe as well as he's kind of been dragged at the end. Yeah. He's actually left his pickaxe in the dirt, and he can't go back for it because he's just being dragged along with, with no, <laughs> no mercy. Hearing that, I think we should be that second group. And I will pull out the pigments and start creating manacles for us all. And a key. Well, the the main problem is if they said they were going to go speak to the warden, so they're probably going to get the second chain gun from there. I don't think us disguising ourselves going to help. Message them and say that we are here under the warden's word. Hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what our... I think if we follow them, that might lead us to someone who perhaps is more in charge and we can at least get an, a better lay of the situation. But what if we meet someone who's more in charge who starts fighting us? Well, we're going to be sneaking, that's the point. But I imagine they're going to recognise... We're not their slaves. We're not a group they would recognize. And if I was to take a wild guess, I'd say one of the reasons they're being so obedient is probably that the manacles have some form of enchantment on them, which is why they haven't just tried to break free. Hmm. So well, might be discussing a... this, I'm going to go back towards the area that they were in previously and have a snoop around while they're gone. If, okay. Seeing the whisk go off, just like, you see any runes to do with manacles? I don't know how you'll let us know, but I'm sure you'll come up with something. So, Irene, you, you see more bones splintered on the ground. This place almost effectively looks like a graveyard. It's hard to tell what type of bones they are unless you give me a medicine check. Medicine. Yeah, um, like anatomy, basically. Maybe. You are not sure. Some of them are crushed. Some of them are a bit misshapen. And for the most part, it's just it's just splintered bone anyway. So trying to make out anything is impossible. So you just sort of gingerly hover over the bones. Up ahead, you do see a corner filled to the brim with crates. That's and, what I'm interested in. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
that chain there was to sort of represent the one that they were connected to. So, ignore that. Um, you go over to the crates. Uh, as you peer in, or or even just go through the crack of one and, and then look into yeah, the actual I crate. Can't, I can't interact with it, but I can squeeze through the cracks. That's all right, cool, like that. yeah. You just slip through the cracks in one of the crates, and with your incredible dark vision, you can make out the materials within it. Uh, they seem to be of a type of igneous rock, potentially coal, but I guess just a slightly different consistency to it. It seems like a, a type of mineral, though, that they've harvested and they've packed it in there. Um, and continue like looking through other crates as well if you want yeah i'm being i'm being nosy okay let's have a look okay you actually find there is also a crate of fossils as well and these seem to have been excavated most actually some of them are still like in a chunk of rock as well they haven't been like carefully um brushed out so to speak, they've just been found and then tossed into a pile. And the fossils seem to be kind of a... Actually, it's hard to tell the colour of them, because you're, you're in dark vision, so I won't say that. But you can see they seem to be of, like, insect-like fossils. And some of them are, like, almost, like, snake-like as well. But they've kind of got little bones all around in like a coiled shape um what else have we got uh and there seems to be a lot of sandstone as well just a a, a bunch of sandstone and then in one crate as well there's a bit of uh, marble so you, yeah you've got like marble a type of coal uh maybe igneous rock and sandstone and fossils. Seems they, they've organized the crates as well, so they're not just all bumble, any, jumbled into one. Is there any paperwork going around? Paperwork? Mm, no, actually. But you can give me an investigation check. Um, Eighteen. Okay. Um, funnily enough, you actually see in the pile of coal that you first looked at, there seems to be one that's clearly been shaped. Like a, a mason has carved something out of this igneous rock. And as you look at it from a different angle, you can tell that it looks like a talisman. And it's shaped... Um, it's shaped like a hammer into the into the coal. And you can roll me a religion check as well if you want to recognize this one. This is a low DC. 18. Okay. Uh, yeah, that, that is the symbol of Muradin, the god of dwarves and crafts, craftsmen. And uh, yeah, seems like someone has carved into this piece of coal. A holy symbol of Muradin. And with your knowledge of of spell components and arcane focuses, you reckon this would actually serve as a holy symbol that you could use if you were, say, like a cleric or a paladin? I'm gonna uh, let my way back to the group. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, you come back out of the crate and <laughs> swerve across the tunnel and over towards your group there. And now all you find them all standing on top of the ceiling. Um, Andy is the sneakiest, so I'm just going to continuously circle, 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 head back in the direction I was in. Kind of like, Woo, come with me! <laughs> okay. Um, still can't see! Oh, crap, yeah. Um... Uh -huh. 
Who, who's the next sneakiest? Not a liar. She makes Kishan. Kishan. Okay, circle Kishan. Uh, and... I get Kishan. All right. All right. I know are you me. on the ceiling as well, Kishan? Or are you on the ground? Uh... I'll be kind of in between, just on the wall. <laughs> the wall's good. All right. No problem. You can rotate your token at any time to tell me which, basically, which direction of the ground you're on. And you know what? As you come back and forth, Irina, back and forth, you start to realize you you've kind of already lost what is up and what is down already. You're starting to I already realize have you, a theory. I already have a theory. In fact, as you come back to the crates, it's almost as if they're actually stacked on the wall and not on the ground. But anyway. So it's just something you're slowly starting to lose the notion of what's up and down. Anyway, Kishan, you come along the wall and you notice the same thing I've been describing. The crates, the splintered bone across the ground. I'm, I'm going to specifically take him to the one that's got the, the talisman in it. Okay. Yep. I'll take a look. Yeah, you have to lift up the lid of the crate and yeah you find a piece of igneous rock with a holy symbol of Muradin carved into it and it looks Muradin. like it was looks like it was hidden in here as well like it wasn't just on the top we'll say that it was kind of on its side it could have okay. easily been mistaken hmm. by a normal piece of igneous rock but an 18 on investigation spotted it I attempt uh... to shape myself into a Wolf. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah, you get the outline of a like... scout figure. Yeah. You get this wispy beard. <laughs> it's clear to it's clear to you she's uh gesturing this as a dwarf symbol. Um there happened to be two dwarves in the group that just went around the corner. Which sure. means one of them is potentially a paladin or cleric. Oh. But I can't tell you that part. You have to figure that yeah. out yourself. Yeah, I guess make uh, a religion check, Kishan. Not my, terribly high DC. Uh, I was also going to say make an intelligence check as to what the yuck she's on about. So I'll do both. Yeah, yeah. That, intelligence that, check. That would come under religion because it's still intelligence. Yeah, so you would know pretty well. This is the symbol of Muradin. Irene is telling you that that dwarf back there is either a cleric or a paladin. And with that as well, I will tell you that this could be used as the holy symbol for their spell. But it's clearly been uh, stowed away here. You see kind of Kashan staring at it for a moment and then looking back at you, looking back at the symbol, looking back at you as I... And then pockets the, uh, the symbol. The dwarf just goes <laughs> because he wants <laughs> like Candlewick needs to learn charades, it'd be so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> that one. Uh, actually, as it happens. Arena and Kashan. Doesn't seem they're coming back this way. You do see the chain gang actually pass by a passageway to the south. And this passageway is much more built. You can see there are stone tiles and brickwork rather than just a natural cavern. And they seem to pass by the, the passageway. They don't stop and they don't turn. So they don't really notice you. You do notice they have they've gone further down the man-made tunnel. They've kind of gone in a circle then. Somewhat, yeah. They did say they were going to... They did say they were going to loop round. Hmm. Anyway, what do you guys like, do? I, I'm a cloud. Like, I start yeah. kind of drifting back There's towards our here. group, but then... So I'm kind of hovering. What does he want to do? <laughs> do we want to pretend to be one of them? I could, I could probably right. convince them that. No, way. better idea. What if 
I tried to convince them that I'm one of the slavers, and you guys chained him. That's why they wouldn't recognize you. Because we saw that guy who was trying to get the slaves, right? Mm. He did, yeah. And I could disguise myself as him with an old self spell. So then if you chain yourselves together, then... And I can speak the lingo. Well, don't... Do you need to be chained to us? No, because beca on? because he was the slaver. So I imagine he would just be dragging you guys along, not necessarily chained up with them. So I don't think the Minotaur's... I think the Minotaur is a slave. It looked like it was still doing the work. He okay. was yeah. um, hammering away with a pickaxe, yeah. So... Manacles then? And a chain? Yep. And Karis is gonna begin to focus on the image of that guy and cast Alter Self on himself. So, yeah, I pull out the pigments yep. and I start drawing, like, painting. Sean, myself, and the. Uh... Irina, just in case she comes out of the farm. I don't know how long this lasts. It lasts for an hour. I don't know this, and you can't tell me this. So, I'll create... Three? Three manacles? Three manacles. A spare pair that Carrius can be holding on to. Yeah. Cool. yeah. And a chain that links them. And What are you um, making the chains and manacles out of? The pigments. Pigments, okay. Marvelous pigments. Yep. And three sets of keys, so we can all have a key each. D does, he get ourselves out. Does, he look, does he look like an orc to you? Is that what he we... He does look orcish, you're right. Yeah. How how many feet would you say that, that is? They're quite small, aren't they? In terms of pigments. Yeah, they're, they're, they're small. Um, so I could count this down. I've got 100 feet worth. We'll say one foot for each manacle. Okay. And then for the chain, um, however long it is in feet. Um, so how long you was want... all theirs? Um, exactly. Theirs was about each person. 25 feet. When new slavers, I won't make them that long. I'll make them like we're, we're stuck, we're close together. You're close, okay, sure. With... They have a bit of slack in their chain, so that basically they can they can split up into different sections of a cave and then hammer away at it. Uh, if you want to make yours tighter so you're just connected back to back effectively, then we'll just say knock off uh, ten. And off of that. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. And uh, by the way, a chain's a very useful item to have anyway later on. So. So, ten foot to chain, and I'm down to ninety. What's a pigment? Yeah. Sounds fair. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. Karius is yeah. going to, um, as part of this, he's going to take his very fancy looking coat off and put that in like his bag and stuff just so, you know, because okay. alter self just alters your physical appearance. It doesn't alter your clothing. Sure, yeah. Would you hmm. say it's uh an action to unmanacle ourselves, or is it a, would you say? Is it yeah, a... to put the key in and unlock it, yeah. Okay, so we've mm. all got a key, we're all manacled. Um, I say it all, myself. No, the bef... I'm miscounting, the before. It's fine, because it won't, this won't drop until an hour, and then after an hour it says... This, this is the one hour's... Four manacles, four keys. Thinking, we'll call, yeah, we'll call it four mm. manacles, four keys. Yeah. Right. So. And, yeah, and Carius is holding on to the spare pair in case. Yeah. We Irina find a new, out. or we find a new slave. Oh, that. Yeah. Right. Karis starts to centre himself and just sort of in this new form, just trying to get into character. Okay. It is your. Where do you want to go? 
So I'm going to... Team within your hands. Um, considering they said they were looping round and we're going to speak to the warden, I'm going to start walking in the direction that Irina and their smoky form is. Basically, like, I'm walking back towards where the warden would be to hand over the slaves. Does that make yep. sense? Sure. Uh, feel free to move your tokens now. You're all mm. on the map as you've come out of that cavern. And Taplo will poof into non into the um you know pocket dimension yeah yep. okay Oof. off he goes all right mm. and we obviously need to get Kishan chained up as well yes mm -hmm. <clears throat> all right so you would chain yourselves up carius looks like an orcish slave driver mm -hmm. and uh, the glaive is it's almost like it's similar to this he had a falchion yeah. of, of like a rusty nature, but yeah. I believe... I, I've got two rusty. glaives and a scythe. It's kind yeah. of an over-armed. But, but I can say that some of them are spoils of war from like the fight okay. to get the slaves. You'll probably have three glaives because I, I I don't I don't think it'd look right if I'm carrying around a rocking horse. True. So you As you carry that. come out of the tunnel into this much cramped, more man-made tunnel, you can see the cracked tiles lead around two different directions, left and right. And Irina's swishing around the corner up ahead. I guess so. That's, that's the direction I saw them go when they walked past, right? It is. So yep. I'll follow yeah. after Irina. Okay. Irina, you come into what looks to be a maze-like passage leading in different directions, but you can tell it opens up again into a more natural-looking cavern, or there's the two other directions which are more man-made, and there's a bit of, bits more of splintered bone everywhere. The earth here is tightly packed. And I guess from that corner, yeah, and as you come around, you start to see this Kevin has something wiry going across from the one length of the tunnel to the other, forming like almost like a web. And as you get closer, and you've got light, right? You've got um, the light from the torch again. Uh, not at the moment because we probably wouldn't have a torch lit whilst. Oh, okay then. Well, then you're in complete darkness. But uh, Irina's Irina, got mega yeah. dark vision. Of course, you do. Yeah. You can see through this kind of web of wires over towards the other side. It does seem like the cavern opens up quite wide. And at the far end, I guess you can see crates and barrels. But uh, this, this looks kind of terrifying. As you get closer, you notice there are twists in the wire with barbs sticking out. It, it resembles barbed wire. Um, and it there's is, no it sound? Nasty. No sound from this direction, no. Cool. Okay. Which means it probably didn't go this way. Okay. You would be able to go through it because you're just smoke at this point, but you you know, it's anyone trying to navigate through that would just be cut to ribbons. Um, Irina, as you come around the corner, there is a little... It's a little dead end, but you see a mound of earth just sort of like wobbling, like a like a molehill, effectively. It's about, it's like a small creature. You've no idea how big it is underneath, but the the mound itself is only about a foot in diameter. And you just see it there for a moment, just sort of wobbling. And I guess, because you're floating as, as gas, uh, you don't really disturb it. But the people behind you, as they're kind of thumping along the walls, you suddenly see it stop and then it digs underground and you see the mound sort of disappear into the packed earth. Something was just burrowing there. Um, as you come back out of that dead end and loop around, you find yourself in sort of a central, central uh, chamber with four different directions 
leading off into different paths. And you realize at this point you may be in the thick of the maze. Or maybe just the initial. There are a couple of barrels and more splintered bone everywhere you go. Sound check? I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. Roll me a perception check. Nice. Okay. Uh, initially, you hear it coming from the south. But with a natural 20, you would notice that's a trick of the sound as it's echoing around. It's actually coming from this pathway to the right. Because of the way it just bounces around and comes and loops around. But the sound is of speech and you can hear um, back and forth conversation. You can say Oh, there's a collapse. A uh, pretty big one by the looks. You want us to go look at it? And then you hear a, No. I know what caused that. Does and that... it wasn't just... Uh, yeah, you hear this loud, kind of gruff voice. And it's speaking in Dwarven, but it's definitely not a Dwarf speaking it, Irina. Mm. And as you come around this corner, you do see there is some light coming from the end of the tunnel. And it's a long, long tunnel. <laughs> You're going to sneak up a hand. Uh, the conversation gets clearer and clearer, and it's almost like you're about 20 feet away from it at this point, Irina. And uh, he says, uh, yeah, you can hear him clearing, uh, much more clearing. He says, be on the lookout. There is intruders, outlanders. Okay. They already destroyed the earth elementals under my command. <sighs> Do I want to try to bluff this? Do I want to try to bluff this? Well, I mean, the elemental's under his command. That means he is you. Yeah, but I'm tempted to go for something like, well, that's a good job I turned up then and finished the job that you failed. Sort of discredit him, but... Hmm. You want to say you're saying that, Alhan? <laughs> no, a character's is just considering this. Yeah. <laughs> do it, do it. He says... I've tended to my wounds, but there's n these guys are clearly not. <sighs> They're not average adventurers, sad to say. This is going to be an interesting thing. I'm just going to go for the chaos and the gonna fun. going to be tougher than just slaves. Uh, okay, Darius, you come around the corner. You are face to face with uh, the goblin, I guess, who's at the back. Um. He's kind of sitting bored with his arms folded. He's not even paying attention to this conversation. And he's looking in your direction and he's like, he double takes and looks at you. <laughs> uh, his little ears kind of prick up and the others are in conversation with the this orcish shaman. He seems to be on a, on a crate, steadying himself with his falchion. He's bandaged himself up. You can see he's got like a leg in a splint and uh, there are loads of other crates towering around here but this is a dead end yeah. you can see chests and crates abundant and uh, this is like a little office space it seems but uh yeah this is what you see the goblin is just like ah. uh, but don't... he doesn't say anything no you know what i'm gonna go for this way don't listen to that imposter as if i would be able to be taken down by some mere adventurers Oh, wait, I'm see You see the goblins like, wait, I'm seeing double here. Uh, the dwarves are like, by Moradan's beard. They're here already? And uh, <laughs> then you just see the, the earth, this earth shaman just like, that's them. No, that's one of the adventurers trying to trick you. I've captured these, hence why they're chained up. Oh, we were captured by Rick. such a hero of the Earth realm. <laughs> Elias is trying to help here. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll say because you're chained up and you got some help from Elias, he's adding to this. Uh, you can add 
Sorry, you can roll a deception with advantage. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's, he's like, "What? You can't be! You can't be serious!" And um, no, then the, the dwarf's is like, "Oh, or in that case, get him! Take out <laughs> this imposter, right?" Yep. Uh, um, uh, you heard him, Mongon. Take him out. And uh, see the monitor. <laughs> takes his, uh, his uh, fits at him and just begins rushing towards him and attempt to gore him. <laughs> uh, and I'm just going to roll him in there. God, this this was a much on. better lie to go with. Um, 20 to hit him. He's actually not wearing much armor, this guy. Uh, he seems to be much more of a spellcaster type, and the the two horns puncture his lungs. He's like, like oh! <sighs> and he's he's trying to like cast a spell already. Um, I think yeah, it's a uh, call for initiative, real quick. Yeah? <laughs> I know the rest of you slaves yeah. don't want to make out your <laughs> okay. Uh, you're powerful enough, but oh. there we go. That initiative looks go good for a moment. That. But are we? Are we in... Okay. That's about right. So he's just, he's probably like shouting, shouting like, wait, 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 wait. And he's also at the same time trying to cast a spell. Let me just check what spell that is. Yep, that one. Um, you see the earth around him sort of molding and rising up. But he hasn't quite got it off yet. Uh, so... I'm going to say, yeah, Irina, you're up first if you want to. You're a smoky, smoky person yeah. at the moment. I'm going to, like, obviously, if I see this guy starting to, like, cast a spell or whatever, I'm going to obscure him like I'm a friend trying to help him. Um, but I'm actually going to try and, like, just get in the way of his spell casting and mess up his, like, hand gesturing or. <laughs> Block his vision or something. Okay, right. Look at this. He's trying to hide in plain sight as well. What a moron. So, yeah, you already see he's struggling with a horn stuck in his side, and now the smoke's in his way. He hasn't, he hasn't got much of a target. I'm going to say because he's, he's kind of slightly blinded. He'll have disadvantage if he is trying to attack someone with a spell. Um, cool. Uh, the others are unarmed. The slaves do not have... Well, they have a pickaxe. Tell a lie. They do have pickaxes. So they immediately raise them up and begin hacking into this guy. And it is... It's bloody and brutal. But it's the only weapons they've got. So, yeah. Let's just do that. It's going to say mace, but it's a pickaxe. Um, and it's piercing damage rather than bludgeoning. So, yeah. Eight points of piercing damage. This guy actually manages to get a hit in. Ugh! And he just hacks away, and you can see him wincing. Every strike he does, he's like holding his other arm, like in pain. Um, that's his go. Mongon is the the Minotaur. He just immediately uh, brings down his pickaxe, which it looks much bigger. They've given him like a larger one, so we'll call it a great, great, great axe. Yeah. There it is. Uh, near enough, chops his arm off. This guy is getting brutalized in the corner. Um, and he's up. <clears throat> um, You're chained. Yeah, exactly. Um, it's all part of the act. I don't know. I mean, if she's pretending to be a slave... I would imagine she play the 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 innocent card and she'd just start dobbing in air quotes in the corner. Okay, cool. So you keep the act up mm. and uh yeah, you don't wanna you know, giving little piss off. freaks every now and again when she sees, you know, someone being cut up and just like yeah. oh. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna just play along with this for now. Mm-hmm. Harris is your slave master, you wouldn't wanna anger him. Speaking yeah. of Karis. Right. Karis is just going to whisper something and um, 
<laughs> vicious mockery. This guy is just like, Ooh. ah, you thought you had us, didn't you? <laughs> That's just the mockery that he is in his head. It's, it's them. I'm, I'm telling you, it's them. <laughs> and uh, at this point, he's like, the seneschal will hear of your betrayal. You slaves will be, you'll be thrown to the bullets. The 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 seneschal. The seneschal shall reward them for dealing with an imposter. Uh, <laughs> that, that, the governor's like, sounds good to me. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Jumps up and uh, uses his little hand pickaxe to take a swipe at him. It. He dropped his. Oh, yeah, he he, he'll He's just like, have to punch. Hit yeah, him with a rock like, yeah. or punch him. Throws a rock. <laughs> when we break stubby arms... If I had my stone armor, maybe I could headbutt him, but uh, it's no use. Okay, and the two dwarves, uh, they immediately get to hammering. Mm. They've got, again, it's um, pickaxe. I say war hammer, but it's a war pick. 12. Ah, oh, that misses, unfortunately. Does manage to defend himself against that, and then, alas, you're a slave. <laughs> you're I mean, being, um, I mean, slave like? We have been ordered to take this guy out. So do as the master tells us. And or you could try to do something that's a bit more subtle, like spell-wise. Yeah. Or as they would be kind of flanking with the goblin. So that makes yeah. them both it. I will... Um, I guess I'll vicious mockery him as well. Okay. And... Well, I'll just say okay. he, isn't, he isn't even a good imposter. Just take him out. Do as the master uh, says. If you can do that damage, I, you can I? this guy before he uh, you has can. a chance. You can. You should be able to do three d four, which would be enough. Oh, oh, you can do it. No. no. Yeah. And he makes the save too. Wait. Oh, he made the save, sorry, yeah. He made the save. Okay. Just... So, he's like, get out of my head! No! Um, he is going to cast. He's going to get a chance to cast a spell. Okay, Unless anyone's Sean. got a counter spell. Well, that's uh, yeah, I actually do, actually. Because, <laughs> you... Harrius. Uh, I've not. It would be my last third level, which... Up to you. He's... You see this mound of earth rising up in front of in front of him and he seems to be like trying to raise it up even further and it's, it's almost yeah. like the same size as him actually no I'm going to use this as part of my lie I'm going to point to him and uh, and count to spell and it's like look he's trying to mimic our magic and he fails as I count to spell him poor imposter indeed <laughs> you see that the hand which was manipulating it just Freezes in place as he's like looking at it as if the spell has been torn away from his grip, and the stone that was rising up crumbles to pieces. And it just there's less rubble on the floor, and he doesn't even try to defend himself, knowing his fate is pretty sealed at this point. Um, the other two slaves immediately take their chance to just hack him down, and he's he's just stunned, knowing this is the end. Uh, he, he probably does beg for his life, in fact, on his turn. Maybe he says, uh, wait, 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 I can, I can give you an audience. Now with, uh, with the mm. Seneschal. How about, wait, chain him up with the others. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... <laughs> I'll tell you what, just give me a persuasion check. This isn't because uh, they don't believe you, but because at this point, they are, these slaves have been, you imagine it from their point of view, they've been forced around, practically tortured, and uh, they just want to get revenge at this point, but you're trying yeah. to tell them to uh, not. Just, just a second. Or... Wait, some of them are dwarves. I have advantage on persuasion checks with dwarves. Because of your... Belt of dwarven kind. Uh, <laughs> well, Alright. Yeah, I'll let, you, I'll let it fly. Go ahead. 
advantage. Nice. All right. Um, so you see the well, human is trying to like hack at him. And you see the dwarves are like, wait, wait. You're right. He's more useful as a as a slave. After all, the the Dao they take prisoners and not just murderers. Exactly. Besides, if he if he thinks he was such a good slaver, and Karis does the air quotes, let's see if him get some practice as a slave. With that, you see the Minotaur instead looks down and just knocks him out with the blunt, blunt end of the pickaxe. And yeah, he, he kind of falls back, nose busted and bursting with blood. And he is un pretty much unconscious at this point, not fighting back either. Right. Oh. All right. Yeah, that ends combat. Now, on my way here, I saw that we'd had a bit of a cave-in. I... I reckon you lot should get on that, shouldn't you? Uh, that we should. Um, it's going to take a while to clear with a single chain gang. But... Well, I'll, I'll take this new set of slaves through and I'll get some more chain gang sent this way to help clear it out. Uh, uh, right. While they're uh, um, having this conversation, can I just get a look at the chains to make sure if they're magical or... Yeah, go ahead. Give me um, give me just an investigation check. Because it becomes quite apparent as you look for any kind of runes or any kind of odd materials that the chains might be made out of. They are normal chains. They're sturdy, though. You can tell they're not just an iron chain. They seem to be made of a, a very hardy material, which, which has a bit more of a sheen to it. But you closely scrutinize them. It's not a magical sheen. You can just tell that they are very strong chain. So, yeah. A little bit of a mystery as to why, yeah, they don't just leave. But nonetheless, they say, right, right, uh, another quick question, actually. They came in through that way, right? Yeah. And they're outlanders, so that means they're from... From where? They look like... They look like they're from the material plane. Well, exactly, that's where I went to get them. What's your question, dwarf? So there's a tunnel leading back to the material plane there? Well, there might be if you can clear it out. Right, right. Uh, let's let's get on that. Hint. <laughs> and yeah, he starts nudging the, nudging them all along. I'm going to uh, quickly just kind of go up and start circling Kashan and kind of point towards the door. And... Uh... Okay. Yeah, you see a, a female dwarf, a kind of high, hair tied back in a tight braid. They have a cloth tabard. It looks completely tattered and torn. Uh, but you can imagine in a, it was once, you know, a clean cloth. Garius. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as the dwarf walks past, I'll try and sleight of hand the... Uh the symbol into sure. maybe like their manacles just kind of like stumbling and go oh i'm very sorry and just uh, like <laughs> yeah sure hey, give me a slide of hand. Yeah. it's more want... sleight of hand for the others but for them i want them to know yeah of course beautiful in that case i'm gonna need a roll too but beautiful. that's that's you you can see the dwarf box eyes with you as you kind of stumble into them and they realize that you've palmed them this this symbol she she just takes a quick nod and there is perhaps just the faintest of smiles cracked on their their very uh, brow beaten face okay so i'm just gonna move them away 
they head over towards that tunnel where the cave-in was, and you just hear their chains kind of echoing to this into the distance, and it is leaving you guys rock. here. Yeah, in this small cave, with a unconscious orcish shaman. Right. Is Egbert in one big manacle? <laughs> Sorry. Egbert's Egbert. in your bag, I guess. Yeah, yeah I, just, I just said there's Egbert in one big manacle. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to imagine he is, yeah, perhaps. Yeah. Do these appear to be chests or something? Sean would have insisted. <laughs> they are, their chests, and some of them are barrels on their side. But yes, there are chests. Mm. As well as just the normal assortment of crates, which... As you begin investigating, again, there's kind of sedimentary minerals, fossils, granite, and sandstone in the... Oh, and a bit of marble as well, a bit of marble in the in the crates. Uh, as for the chest, um, they seem to be uh, locked. They do have key keyholes on them. I'm going to search the orc person because they're most likely to have the keys uh yep sure enough there is actually a set of keys on them Wait. yeah in fact Karius looks at this guy looks at himself and goes andy irena turn away a moment <laughs> and he's basically gonna just change into the orc's clothes to make his disguise better <laughs> sure enough yeah you strip him down and then and you begin and this I'll put him. Fire. I'll put him in some. I've only got fine clothes. Do I have any costume clothes still? I'm checking. I have costume clothes. If we yeah. want to make him yeah. look like something. Yeah, we'll 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 disguise him so that he looks like someone who's been captured more than. And Carrot will use yeah. his disguise kit to try to like mess up his features a bit so he doesn't yeah, look as I, obviously like he is i guess i take clothes that i would use to merge in as as a peasant like when i'm not tr trying to you know be a rock star and put some rips in it and and smush it with some dirt and just put it on the guy so he looks like a slave yep all right cool um in addition to that you would notice a couple of other belongings on him uh, there is, uh, what is it called? All hours. <laughs> um, gonna, like, obviously if, if Karius is sort of, like, patting down this guy, he's a shaman, right? He's got to have some sort of spell focus. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was about to describe. Um, you find what's called an epidermal iron. It's oh. weird. It's like a piece of metal that's plated over his um, chest. You kind of you've torn it away and strewn him down to the bare, bare bone. Yeah, on his chest there's like this weird iron plate, and uh, on it you would also see there is sort of a symbol carved. It looks like um, looks like a mountain, and it's got like this kind of jagged looking eye on it as well. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Karis awesome. looks at it and he's just like, does it actually. So, based on the fact it's epidermal, it's basically grafted onto him, essentially. Yep. Hmm. So, that's the only thing you can't remove as you strip him down. Yeah, it's got hmm. this grafted plate on his chest. I mean, it's a holy symbol. symbol. Mm. Karis is. Try. Karis is going to pull out a dagger and just, like, scrape into the epidermal thing to mess up the symbol. Okay. Yeah. Because if it's a holy symbol and it's no longer got the proper symbology on or something like that, then it shouldn't function as well. What What about, yeah. this? What about this? If this was originally a plate before it had the carvings put into it, what if I just mend it to just be a flat plate as it was originally? That is an even better idea. I like it. Oh, yeah, I'll do that. Okay, right. So he's just sure. got a metal plate on him now. But, you know, 
Oh, no, I can't speak. Okay, well, I'll tell you what then. As you cast Mending on it, half of the symbol disappears. The symbol of, like, the jagged-looking eye disappears, but there's a, still a symbol of, like, a mountain, or it looks like a triangle still in it. That apparently was already there, funnily enough. On the iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Yeah. No scrip over it? <laughs> yeah. Um, Karis but the just... does get rid of the... Yeah. The eye, and then if you want to scratch out the, the yeah. tri triangular looking mountain, you can yeah. do that. Karis is just going to scrape the letter K into it. Karis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Got it. Right. Okay. Um, yep. Let's have a look in these um, chests then as we've got the keys, which I also help complete the scope. Go. Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that's fine. I'll, I'll end it on this then. I want to just mention the last thing he, he has got this weapon. It's like a large yep. falchion with this kind of circular notch kind of carved out of it. And uh, yeah, you can see kind of where it's notched. There's like scrapings all along it, yeah. like scrapings of metal. Um, as you open up the chests, you find small chips, some of them larger than others, but they are mostly kind of dull-looking gemstones. The actual valuables that they have managed to carve out of the, the walls and dig into the earth. They, they don't look terribly valuable, but perhaps enough of them amassed might be worth something. Um, but this is clearly not the massive treasury yeah. that you're looking for. This is probably what's like a, a filtering process. Like, this is stuff that might have valuables, and then that's probably shifted somewhere else. Mm. Or again, it's it's sifted through for even more. Um, but yeah, nonetheless, there are bits of of raw gemstone. Like some of it's still got earth and bits of it connected. So they would need like properly excavated by a jewel crafter and such. But uh, yeah, a number of gems, dull, chipped, cracked, all kinds of um, f flawed gemstones. And... Uh, and uh, Infinite bag. Eh, yeah. sorry. It doesn't seem worth taking, no, no. and it would. Um, um, Karis is going to relock the chest and be like, "It. If we take them, then it's going to be obvious that something's gone through here that shouldn't. So, we'll just leave them. I will let you if you wanted to sift through the Elias for something that is worth keeping. I will allow like either a jewel crafting. Or an investigation check. And I know Andy's a dual crafter. They can also either assist or take the lead. Or have their own role if you want. Can we do it next week, yeah. please? Alright then. Yep. So yeah, we will sign off here. This is... Uh, you're already in the thick of it. Already into the first layer of the maze. And uh, we'll, we'll see see how much deeper this rabbit hole goes. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, tune in on Sunday for the Wild Beyond the Witchlight campaign, the Carnival Cards, and on Monday, we... On well, Monday? Yep, for what lies beneath. Okay, cool. Awesome. So, so bye for now. Bye. Bye-bye. Peace.